Alcohol. We've been drinking it for thousands of years. Why, you ask? Well, to get drunk, of course. And in this video, we're going to look into the science of getting drunk. But before we begin, I want to thank you for watching Ben Explains. And if you like this video and want to see more content like it, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Okay. Alcohol contains ethyl alcohol or ethanol which is water soluble and is what gets us drunk. Once we intake this ethanol, it goes down into our stomach and our intestines, where it then passes into our blood, dilating blood vessels, giving us that warming sensation when we drink. But our body hates ethanol and treats it like it would treat any other poison by trying to break it down into chemicals it likes more. And this breakdown happens in the liver. Our liver uses an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase to convert ethanol into acetaldehyde, which is a very toxic substance that our liver must break down again quickly. But sometimes our liver doesn't break down all of the acetaldehyde, which is what makes us feel so bad the next morning. The acetaldehyde is broken down into acetic acid, which is an ingredient in vinegar, and again into fatty acids, carbon dioxide, or water all of which our body really likes. Our liver does this process of breaking down ethanol at a pace of about one drink. Think about a 12 ounce beer per hour. If you drink any more than that, that's when you begin to get that drunk feeling. When you're drinking at a pace greater than what the liver can handle, the excess ethanol travels up to the brain where it acts as a central nervous system depressant, meaning it slows down our brain functions. When ethanol first gets to the brain, we experience the buzz phase, where it reduces our inhibitions and our brain releases dopamine, making us feel real nice and confident during this phase. However, as we drink more alcohol, ethanol begins to bind to two different neurotransmitter receptors, the first being glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, meaning that it increases brain activity. But ethanol blocks this neurotransmitter when it binds, making it difficult for our brain to perform quickly. The second neurotransmitter it binds to is GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, meaning it slows down the brain and ethanol increases GABA production when it binds, further slowing down our brain functions. The areas of the brain that have the greatest impact of this shift in brain chemistry are cerebellum, the area in charge of balance and motor control, our prefrontal cortex, which is in charge of our decision making, and our limbic system, which is in charge of our memory. So when you get drunk, these brain structures begin to perform, well, pretty poorly. The rate at which each one of us gets drunk can vary greatly between person to person depending on certain factors. These factors include our gender, body type, our weight, our tolerance for alcohol, and what kind of alcohol we consume. Now let's just remember, Alcohol can be a lot of fun, but it can also be dangerous if we consume too much too quickly. So next time you go out to the pub, just remember to drink responsibly. Thanks for watching Ben Explains. If you like this video or learn anything from this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, comment them down below. And remember to click that subscribe button for more content. If you like this, May I suggest one of these?